All right, what's up, guys? J.S. Garrett here with my good friend and business partner, L. The Alchemist. And we are going to be telling some stories, doing some ritual reviews tonight, as well as showing off the new radionics machine that we have dropping soon on the website that is the Infernal Manifester. L's got a brand new one right there. And he's going to explain to us how to use it, how it works, and what the thought process was behind creating it. Um, how you doing, brother? Really phenomenal, man. Um, since that boot camp, there's just been so much echoes of just transformation since getting back and kind of hopping back into things is a little bit rougher than I thought because, you know, once you're like out there in the oasis, it's like, holy shit. I'm so in the moment, and then I'm back here in the rush, but it's good, bro. How about you, man? Uh, I, I'm doing really good. Uh, that was actually the most fun I've ever had on a trip. I mean, I know it was, uh, I know we were working, but it didn't feel like it. It felt like a fucking fun vacation. It was like a black magic fun land vacation, and uh, everybody that was there was really fucking cool, dude. Like, I had a blast. We did some of the most potent, badass rituals that i think have ever been performed um that's what ea said to us in the kitchen the day afterwards he's like seriously i don't think anyone's ever done shit like that you know and mm -hmm. uh you know we're just like you know other than other than crowley you know fucking goats and slitting throats i mean uh which I, I don't think they were really doing magic when they were doing that they were just fucking goats and slitting throats they were being depraved and doing all kinds of drugs and shit i don't, I don't think anybody benefited from those <laughs> operations um <laughs> Nah, man, uh, it was it was so fucking cool to, you know, the first time I went out there was like eight years ago as as a student, and I come back eight years later as an instructor. That was that was like awesome for me, really really awesome, and it was yeah. beautiful the whole time we were there. Oh, you know what? One of my favorite whole things that was the um, we had that last right to do on the third night there, and the weather was looking a little shaky. And so, uh, oh, it's supposed to storm us out, it's supposed to rain us out. Didn't you set up like four boxes or something? Yeah, yeah, I set up one, a couple of the clients set up some. Uh, and so there's four all together. And within 30 minutes, EA's just outside, like messing with the girl. And he's like, Did you guys mess with the weather? Why is that? It just got really windy. Yeah, exactly, dude. And that's yeah. that's what I'm finding like the wind is the box like the box changes the wind flow it, i don't feel like it changes anything else but it's like oh you don't want that storm here Whoop! or you know we have a tornado coming i move it from my area and all of a sudden your area kind of got a little bit of rain sorry bro all right, yeah. so I, I was doing a group ritual for my patreon uh subscribers uh, a couple nights ago and uh the weather was supposed to, i mean they said it was going to be cloudy but it was supposed to be clear it wasn't supposed to rain until 5 a.m and so I uh, I finished the group ritual right about 2.30 a.m. And as soon as I said, so it is done and closed out the ritual, I felt a raindrop on my arm. I was like, huh. I felt a couple more. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to sprinkle a little bit. It ain't supposed to rain yet. And so I start, like, taking my stuff inside. And, like, 15 minutes later, it's, like, full-on thunderstorm, dude. Like, like tornado warnings. Uh, I have, like, this... Uh, it's like a giant umbrella, I forget what it's called, that I can put over my, my altar outside that'll keep me dry. And as long as it's not like raining so hard that it puts my fire out, then I, I can push on through some a light rain, I guess. Um, it blew that fucking thing across the yard and I had two 40 pound weights sitting on the bottom of it to weight it down just in case the wind blew, you know? Um, it, was, it was a hellish thunderstorm and it, it lasted for hours. And it didn't stop raining until the till the next day, like the next like late evening. So it, it rained for like 15 fucking hours, um, and it wasn't supposed to, dude. And you look at the radar; it didn't say it was storming at all. And the cool thing was, is I just uh, I, I decided to summon Bael, the storm god, uh, for this ritual. And it seems like every time I've summoned Bael, it, it, it storms like immediately afterwards. Mm. I mean, the first time it happens, okay. Second time it happens, okay. Fifth time it happens, like, damn, it storms every time I summon this this spirit. So I see why they call him the storm god. Mm -hmm. Ain't that the funniest thing, man? Like, the literal interpretation of the spirit to what they actually do. Like, it's, I mean, from Furfur, he causes chaos and schism, whether that's weather or relationships. And I've seen him 
with weather. I mean, that's something I write about in the compendium coming up. It was supposed to get below freezing and it just had rained and had snow. So the next day was going to be awful. And I'm like, look, I could set a box, but I could also set a box with fur fur and really make sure that the shit happens. And it only got to 33 instead of freezing. So the next day it was all slush instead of any ice. And I'm just like, damn, dude. Like, like when I got the, I was so fucked up. They told me I was going to be crippled by the time I was 40. Uh, I, I had a fractured pelvis that healed offset, four herniated discs and a crooked spine. Uh, I made a full recovery of straight spine now, and my body feels like it's fucking 18 years old. Well, and, dude, and that's, you know what? Perfect oh, transition into our conversation about our reviews on each other's rituals. And I definitely want to start off with, you're right, a deification. And I know I've talked about this many times before, but I want to instill in people's mind, like, when it comes to hidden technologies to be able to help your help your body or help yourself expand magically, there's nothing more that's, the, like, a crack, in my opinion, than a ideification. Like, I, from the first time you did one to me, uh, this is back in probably 2019, 2020, somewhere around there. Uh, right from there, my spirit communication increased uh, astronomically. Like spirits would just be there and appear and I could hear them and I didn't have any doubt as well as just giving me more of my health back. Like there's like even before uh, uh, our group right in October, I remember needing a rideification just because I felt a little wonky out of my groove you know because we do rituals for people all the time and you don't and at that point i wasn't using my bucks to give me energy and so i was just drained and i remember uh you did that right for me and i came out there and i got sick for about 24 hours but then i was good you know and i was able to continue forth and that's when you got really sick and you know you were sick for days and so i just see like not only is it good for if you're like in a low place or your body, like what you said you did to be able to reshape your spine, to be able to change the odds of what the doctors would say. Like the right deification is something that has magnetized me as a practitioner to take my magic to the next level because I hate the limitations they've imposed on humanity. And that right there is like, you know what? If someone else in my family has cancer, I can't say I'm going to be able to cure anything x y and z but goddamn at least i can give it my all and uh whether that's learning for myself to be able to do it for others or just receiving that energy and being able to help out myself uh, get my energy back boost up and my body did not be in pain because that was another one i you did for me i had a headache that lasted for a week and you did a ritual and it was gone no problems at all back to the swing of things so like anyone who hasn't had that and you're really looking for that way to open up your magical potentials as well as just helping your body feel a lot more on par. We'll just say that for YouTube's sake. That ride deification, dude. Like, that is by far the most kick-ass ritual in the world. It's, it's good maintenance, too, for, like, elderly people that I give a shit about that I want to keep around longer. Yeah. You know, like that for them once in a while. It puts more life force energy into them. It rejuvenates them. And you were just talking about cancer. Um, I, I had a client, a deification client, uh, it was like six months ago. She hired me for, for a totally different reason, but she had a cancer tumor on her neck and shoulder and she already had surgery scheduled a month out before I did the ritual. Uh, she contacts me like three weeks later and she's like, dude, this tumor is almost gone. Like it started shrinking the day after you did the ritual. So by the time it was time to go in for pre-op, it was the size of a fucking pea and the doctors were like, we don't got to operate it when it, it they said it went into rapid remission <laughs> and i am in no way advertising a fucking cure for cancer or anything else or telling anybody i can heal them of a disease what i'm saying is that if you transfer enough energy into a person then it gives their body the energy that it needs to heal itself and so something like that uh can absolutely send uh something like a tumor into remission and uh I did the same thing on uh, 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 for my father years ago. He had a he had a, a it wasn't cancer, but it was a huge tumor on the back of his neck, and uh, 
yeah, same thing. It just shriveled up and disappeared over a period of weeks. So, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's kind of like, I don't know, it was the first ritual I ever published or released to the public. And that's that's still, to this day, the most popular working I've ever come out with. So, um, yeah, thanks for the good review, man. And, um, yeah, there's, there's not much you can't do with it. And it is highly weaponizable also. Like, <laughs> that was the other thing you were saying. You're telling me about that. And I'm like, damn, bro. Like, Well, the science of evoking people is a, is a, a system within itself that I, I've rediscovered, I guess. I, I'm sure that I, there's no way I'm the only person that's ever thought of this. Um, I think they probably did it for thousands of years. And we just had that knowledge stolen from us. But uh, if you can pull a person's soul out of a out of their body during a ritual for that person, then there's not much you can't fucking do with it. Like for baneful purposes, healing purposes, hell, mind control purposes. If you can pull their consciousness out of body and then sit there and program them like a hypnotist would, that's what yeah. I mean. Distance hypnosis. Um, like it's it's like they wake up thinking whatever you planted in their mind. And I've done experiments with people where it's like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to plant something. I want you to just tell me the first thing that you think about when you wake up, you know? And, and sure enough, man, like if you hammer that into them while they're sleeping, uh, they'll wake up thinking about it. And I think it's their idea. And, you know, something too, man, I'm realizing is like when you program something, like let's say I could, the juggernaut ritual. I did that for someone yesterday during the day. Even if you do a ritual and it's during the day and someone's awake, when they go to sleep, that energy rushes to them, especially if you program that energy. And so they might not feel something right away, but, you know, don't have any hesitancy to do a ritual at three in the afternoon in fear that it's not going to be able to do what it needs to do because it will work and it will hit at night. Like that's just magic itself has an intelligence to it that's, <laughs> I can't, I don't even fully understand it. It's like trying to explain why radionics works, you know? Yeah. Um, it's definitely a science. And um, I like fully understand that's what we're doing here is trying to make new discoveries and understand how the shit works and then share it with other people. I don't think we should gatekeep. I don't think this shit should be secret. I don't think you should have to join a secret order to learn how to do a spell or a ritual no. or something like that. No, that's bullshit, man. That's mean. That is bullshit, bullshit, dude. That's that's, that's why we're in the situation we're in. Yeah, I'm 100% anarchist, adversarialist, whatever. Like, I'm not going to join your order to learn your shit. I'll figure it out on my own if I want to know. And that's, I mean, that's what I appreciate about people out there. Like, they're bringing it out and no fear. And the thing is, is if you truly are connected with the spirits, you think they give a shit about you telling secrets? No, they want that to happen because that's even more energy for them because the conscious knowledge about them and working with them. So that's, I mean, it's ballsy. Um, I wouldn't say I would have been the first one to be like that. But after EA well, and this whole Vudan thing, I'm kind of like, mm, at this point, you know what I mean? Like, I got myself my hunter killer. I have my allies and my other couple defense mechanisms. I'm going to speak out everything I possibly can because that's the problem with our civilization now. We have leaders that are literally holding back knowledge and draining us of our resources of life force for their bullshit. And honestly, that's unacceptable and it's better to fight and die for trying to go against that tyranny than be in a ball and complain about it. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, that's a... absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, you're talking about the juggernaut. Uh, you did that for me twice now, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I I'll tell you, like, the energy that I got from that, um, especially the first time you did it, like, it I really noticed, because I never had it done before. Uh, it was, like, the very next day. I was like, man, I, I feel like somebody did a deification for me. And I was like, I had a lot of not just energy, but motivation, because I had kind of hit a slump. Like, I don't know, like, I, I kind of went into a little bit of a depression um, <clears throat> where, I don't know, like, I mean, I, I, I won't say that I lost my drive, but, uh, you know, I went through this short period of time where, you know, it was like several different things happened uh, concerning people that I uh, loved and trusted. And I was just like, fuck, man, like, it, it sent me into a, a depressive slump. And 
I was having trouble thinking of a reason to even climb out of it, man. I was like, yeah, why, why am I even fucking doing this shit? You know? And, uh, yeah. like, uh, anyway, like you did that for me and it snapped me the fuck out of it, man. Like I, I noticed like within like, like three days later, I was like back in the swing of things. I was back in the, I was back in my laboratory cooking up some bad scientist shit, you know? I was like, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I see why you call it the juggernaut, man. Cause it sets you in motion and you can't be stopped. And I've slowed down since. You've done it for me twice. <laughs> and that, I mean, at the end of the day, like that's the only way I can think about the energy that comes forth because regeneration, so you can continue to go forward and not be weathered, as well as once you're going forward and then you're more solidified in why you're doing what you're doing. And I find that's a big thing about this. It gives you a fire of understanding your purpose. And by understanding your purpose to a higher degree, it motivates you in every aspect of your life. And so then as you projected and inspired on that, you go forward and then you just keep going forward and you start feeling all the accomplishment. And then you're like, oh shit, I'm kind of stuck in this groove of enjoying accomplishing things. And so like that whole entire ritual is to get someone into that groove to where that just becomes a natural state like to be on the juggernaut way and uh what you just described is exactly what it is man like i've whether it was getting people to knock out the content they needed to do or for their job or getting themselves in the gym on a different eating regimen or whatever it is I, this is pro I, I mean probably the most uh favorite of people's of the rituals i do is the juggernaut because it's it's, it's been my one so far yeah, now, it's, it's like there's no them. flavor. Um, that one, that one was probably, oh, that was the one that benefited me the most at the time that I needed it the most. Like I said, like I said, it sent me, you know, I, I come to a, a place of being idle, mm -hmm. and it set me, it kicked my ass into motion, and I've just been building momentum like constantly. And that, and that's what I mean, like whatever flavor the person needs, it doesn't come with some natural, like oh, uh, this is what it's gonna do. It's like. This is an insane amount of energy to project you forward. So when you get hit with it, it's going to be in your groove of how you want to go forward. Because I wouldn't expect everyone to do certain things I do or go to the gym like I do. But that's what it, the energy has done for me. But what it does for other people is it does it exactly in their vein on what they need. Um, dude, thank you for those kind of words, bro. The Juggernaut is fucking awesome, bro. Uh, that's uh, true. I've recommended it to, to several people. That have gotten it and, and and been very very happy with the results. Yeah, um, dude, and you know, going from um, what needs to happen versus what you want to happen, uh, actually completely transitions to the Astarte love spell that you did for me, and understanding because I had that spell done for me twice, and the first time I had it done within a week of it being done, the girl who I had done it to, she was like. I'm leaving town and I'm not gonna be back. I remember and that. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> she leaves town. What she's supposed to do right. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. She she totally left town. It's actually the person that that moved away. Um, uh, yeah, down south or whatever. But I was like, okay, maybe something will work out down the line. But I ended up just kind of like letting it go, and I didn't think much about it. And then I did it again. And I also asked Belial for his help with this girl. And that's when the next day I went to my job and I ended up being told I was going to be fired if I said another word to this girl, which is a whole thing. Like, I guess she got really that scared of my. But what love spelling bitches, man? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 Belial, Belial smacked the shit out of me on that. And that's when I shaved my head because he's like, dude, you care about what other people think too much. Whether it's that girl, whether it's your own appearance about yourself, and that's what Inata was showing me. Like, you want to use all this energy towards making someone love you? How about you love yourself? And so what I needed in that time period wasn't someone to fulfill my cup. It was me to fulfill myself and for me to become a god in my own life. Instead of being a miserable fuck, worrying about other people's opinions, that's when I was invigorated on like maximizing the way I can use my magic into bettering my self image, which in turn helped me use it to make rights like the juggernaut to like push myself in hard different ways. So like that, right. I know you've had many people with success 
or it builds the love, especially if two people are already together and it just adds that hardcore more just electricity between the two. Married that I, I told him, I was like, I'm gonna give you money back. There ain't no fucking way. You know, and then I'll hear back from him like six months later, they're like, We just got engaged. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> I did not think that was gonna happen. Like I told him, I was like, This is not gonna happen. You know, like there's no way. This person's too fucking nutty, you know, or this relationship's too fucked up. You know, I mean it's not just for targeting like like, oh, I wanna fuck the neighbor girl, you know, I'm gonna put a spell yeah. on that creepy as shit. I don't I don't recommend doing stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. I, like I developed it for couples, like married couples that were trying to like hold the relationship together and put their you know fire back in the relationship and whatnot, which it absolutely does that. But now I'm just like, okay, you know, I should have gotten divorced like seven, eight years ago, and I did this spell and it kept our relationship together. And it wasn't until I destroyed that that jar and undid the spell, I was finally able to end things. Um, so so anyway, uh, I think it's love magic, is something you have to use wisely. Seriously, yeah. um, and, and self love that's the number one overlooked thing that this spell is for. Um, I have people that you know, especially people that have been traumatized in fucked up ways as children, yeah. um, like they have trouble loving themselves. And uh, I'll do the spell for them for self love. We don't, we don't ask for romantic love, we're not trying to you know seduce anybody or anything like that. You absolutely can, um, but we do it for self love. and those people get mind-blowing results and mm. next thing you know they're in a serious relationship you know because once you once you uh heal and you love yourself like you were saying Belial, Belial told you then then everybody else wants to love you too you know yeah well you here's the thing the way you feel about yourself is for internal as within so without so if you love yourself then you understand your value therefore your senses are oh i love myself this is great and other people are going to pick up on that and be magnetized towards you versus the, oh, woe is me, wham, wham, wham. And you become a freaking sap, a drains energy of rooms because you're depressed, because you're choosing depression. And that's something like I have understood in myself, especially because of that ritual, the, the intensity of how I uh, hold myself is going to affect my environment. And I remember putting myself in a self-depression for like four months and uh, to a point where I hit, like, I was like, oh my gosh, can I really not get out of this? Like, I'm actually stuck in this now. Like, I, I used to like force myself to be in this low energy. And I remember getting out of that. And ever since then, like, it was around that exact same time. And that's like when I was learning about self-love. I was like, damn, dude, like, I'm really in control what goes on. Like, there might be external circumstances where people say shit, but at the end of the day, like, if I look in the mirror and I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I like what I see here, and I'm going to keep going forward, then that stuff's not going to stick to you. Otherwise, it's being pulled to you. So, like, the value of self-love, dude, is invaluable. And Inanna Astarte, I couldn't be more thankful for what she did, because if I would have got what I wanted, I might have been a simp for the rest of my life. No, like, for real. Instead of, like, seeing my value and being like, dude, I don't care. Like, that person can talk to me, not talk to me. It doesn't matter. And that was a huge thing. You know, I got into magic. It was because of love magic. And throughout my process of learning magic, I learned it's about self-love. And once you have that, you don't even need love magic. It's it's almost irrelevant. Because you're able to shine authentically and be like, look, this is all my goals and objectives. And if someone comes along, cool, but I trust the spirits and what they want to bring forth in my life, you know. And, you know, sometimes I give offerings to love spirits and just say, if there's something awesome that you want to bring forth to me, cool. But at the end of the day, like, it, it's, I don't care, bro. Like, <laughs> I love life so much yeah, and I believe in magic. Myself, dude. Um, you know, I, I did when I created this spell for the relationship that I was in to try to make it better, but. Um, for, first thing people say whenever people that know me and what I do and they see my girlfriend, they're like, oh, you must have put that love spell on her, dude. I'm like, no, dude, actually, I didn't. Um, <clears throat> when I found myself uh, finally single again and ready to uh, start dating again, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do a spell to um, bring any more fucking problems into my life. I'll tell you what. Like, when you guys, I was talking to the spirits, and I was naming them specifically, Astarte and Belial and Shibyaza and Say like like the main ones that I work with, 
I'm like, when you guys want me to be with someone, then you'll bring the perfect girl to me. Like, mm -hmm. Me. And then I'll know. And, it, dude, it didn't take long. It did not take long at all. I'm fucking happy now. And, uh, do I work with love spirits all the time? But uh, as far as, like, targeting someone specifically or trying to keep a shitty marriage together, fuck that, man. And that's, I mean, that's the biggest thing I learned with King Belleth. Uh I remember getting a uh, right done where there was blood offered on my behalf and saying, can you help this thing trans change in, and work itself out? And what happened was I continually see how much I don't give a shit about all that other stuff and how much I cared about expanding myself. Which, in turn, ended up evolving into me going out there doing a right with King Belleth. After a long, a tremendous going to find myself of self-love of, with this entity and then be able to do that group right. And that was Santolak when we did that. Like, that was a huge capstone for me because I, had, I hadn't been stuck in the love spell shit anymore, but... I still was like wondering like the depth of my self love and doing that right and just being in the king's presence is like no man like all those things of the past on why you get pulled into magic or why you have to learn because that's the biggest thing I've understood is you don't learn these different methods just because the spirits want to tell you them but it's because you have to use them in your own life and have to find out how that alchemy works out so then you can apply it in your life. And then you can use that information to help out other people. And that's the exact same thing with King Bella. If like, oh, yeah. find out all those principles and then understand how to expand. Now you can help other people expand. So when it came to the Bilal, let's go with the Bilal right first. I had a nagging BS person that I was awoken at 4 a.m. to my front door by a police officer about me driving across country, apparently breaking into someone's house, trying to pick them up, but they were too fat. <laughs> so I had to put them down and drive back. And L, your friend L broke in my apartment, tried to kidnap me while I was asleep, but he couldn't lift me because I'm too fat. <laughs> I'm like, I think this is a joke, right? Until it goes on and on and on. And she sends me a picture of a bruise on her leg that I don't know. I mean, it could have been a handprint. Like, this is where he grabbed me and tried to pick me up. I'm like, you told me that motherfucker drove. You told me that motherfucker drove like five states over to kidnap your fat ass. <laughs> and he gave up because you weighed too much. Like, you could have yeah, yeah. it, dude. Bullshit. I don't give a fuck. I want to pick up a fat bitch. I'm going to pick up a fat bitch. He, he just wheeled a dolly in there and got you, you know? Like, what are you fucking <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Knock, knock, knock. I'm in the outfit. Um, But that's, I mean, it was Dude, shit like that. Like, I've ever heard a woman accuse somebody of. <laughs> well, so, and the thing is, is, like, I don't ever like to, like, in all reality, I like to walk with peace. That's just the way I am. But as soon as you make me pull out the sword, I'm going to pull it out. Mm -hmm. And um, especially because Belial once told me, if you're going to pull the sword out, don't put it back away because they will backstab you. Like, if you're going to pull it out, pull it out, finish the job. And so I'm... I'm trying to kind of ignore a situation because the cop could tell, like, I I was innocent because it didn't make any sense. And then you hit me up saying you're getting hit up by this crazy person. And then my mother hits me up saying she's getting hit up by this person. And, like, that's, that draws a line. Like, like, as soon as you're entering that, and then also I know they're trying to get a hold of uh, one of my other jobs I'm a part of. It's like, mm. yeah, you've crossed the line. And that's when I got <laughs> that, that Belial rich. I just said, dude, like, I I know it's not right now on the website, but if everyone, like, if you are looking to have a Belial ritual, just hit up the help desk. And eventually we will have it on the website. But do know that is something that is still, um, it's not shown, but it is. I, I got an email about it a couple of days ago after asking if I still do it. And I was like, yeah. I, Okay, the reason I took it off the website is because it's called the Court of Belial, and it's specifically to help people win or resolve legal matters. Well, if you're going through a legal case, like a divorce, um, and, a, and a narcissistic, pompous-ass judge has that printout slapped on his desk, go, look what this guy says he can do with magic here. He's going to manipulate you with killing a chicken. They're going, oh, you are, huh? Well, go ahead and just fucking fuck you. You know, like, I, I, want, I didn't want to use against me. That defeats the purpose of doing it. Yeah. 
Um, but now that that's over, uh, yeah, I can talk about the situation if I want to. Uh, I don't like talking about my personal life, uh, but when other people put it out there for you anyway, then in, in a skewered, obscene bullshit way, you almost have to like defend yourself at some point. But uh, yeah, I'm putting that ritual back on the website. I mean, it gets. Yeah. Ex- I mean, I mean, honestly, like when I think about J.S. Garrett, I'm like. Belial, like that's the first, it's, then Shimyaza. It's just like that's just what I think about. And uh, what had happened after you had done that ritual for me, I didn't get, I wasn't getting hit up. No one else I knew was getting hit up, and the whole situation was resolved. I didn't have to get a hold of the police department anymore. I didn't have to worry anymore about shit. And it was just, it was like. <laughs> It was like it was a nightmare, and I woke up, and it was over, like, just in a snap. But, you know, whether that was t- – it could have been taken to something to a, a whole other degree, just out of someone being – It uh, might have some attention, but it just wasn't believable at all. And <laughs> I'll just, Congratulations on getting your very first stalker, Hill. Um, that's Thank the first you. Man- uh, it's a regular thing, and for some reason, every time you know I get a message from from a random person talking about why are you astrally channeling inner devil energy to my vagina or something like that, you, you look at their profile and they're 400 pounds and they're cross-eyed. It's like, uh, it's like really, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I would channel devil energy to their vaginas, you know, all all those chicks. Yeah, yeah, they're they're really the top ones on the list, bro. What what gorgeous? Yeah, we, we, we wouldn't want to like you know astrally make out with Megan Fox or anything. Yeah, the whole thing is yeah, no, cool. dude. I'm looking for the snaggle tooth. Like, does the tooth move when you talk? And yeah. and are you over 400 pounds? Like, if you're not on both of those, like, I don't know. Like, am I going to be astrally going there? I don't know, man. Like, what, what happens is when you're when you make it known that you're a black magician or a witch or whatever, you practice magic, then you tend to get accused of a lot of things and blamed of a lot of things. So if somebody's watching you on YouTube and, you know, they're they're uh, fantasizing about fucking you while they're masturbating and then they go have a wet dream about you, next thing they know, you know, oh, this guy's astrally raping me or this woman's astrally raping me. I've got female witches, friends of mine that get accused of that too. Um, just because you have a wet dream about a motherfucker does not mean that they are flying out of their body and raping you in your sleep. Okay, that is ridiculous. We don't do that. Even if I could do that, I would not do that. Um, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And that, and that's something too. Like, if y'all really think we're gonna use all of our energy on trying to go actually go after someone, like, do you really think the spirits that we're working with talking about would allow us to be doing nonsense? No, they'd whoop our ass. And that's yeah. something, too. You know why so many people come up? Like, this is a harsh truth, y'all. You know why people come up and then get destroyed? It's because they're not authentic with their path. They're doing it for clout. They're doing it for this and that. They're not doing it for the authenticity of that connection, as well as a bigger idea other than themselves sitting on the couch eating cheetahs getting a blowjob. Like, it's just ridiculous. And uh... Blowjobs. <laughs> not, not women. Anyway. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And oh, dude, God. I'll tell you, oh. the funniest one I've had recently is, uh, I think I forwarded you this. Uh, I got to tell the story. <laughs> so this dude uh, writes me uh, on Messenger. And, you know, he was very polite, you know, like kind of almost blowing smoke up my ass. Like, you know, like, your content's awesome. I love your stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Watch your channel at all oh, thanks man i really appreciate that you know thank you for watching and give me some positive feedback yeah like four days later i don't check my message every day it was like four or five days later i check it again and there's like eight messages from him and the first one is can you please explain to me the connection that we have and what you and your friends all the people at bog and l and named us all are doing to me on the astral and then there's a pause, and then and then it's a threat. I am hereby declaring war on you and all of the covenant of God of the occult community, and I will not stop till you all submit to me and bow before me. And then the next one is like, I am cursing you right now. And I, I, I don't even respond to these things typically, but it was kind of like Megamind. 
I was like, like this is like this, this dude sounds like Mega Mind to me. And so I said, ooh, I feel it. And then I, I Googled butthole with hemorrhoids. I found a picture of a dude's butt with a hemorrhoid. <laughs> like up close. I sent it to him. I was like, oh, you got me. <laughs> you got me, dude. And, and then I Googled giant butthole. It was this woman with a giant butthole. Um, and I sent that to him. I said, this is what yours is going to look like when Curtis Joseph gets done with you. Because, <laughs> I mean, he's threatening Curtis, too. So, I mean, fuck. Woo! It was just too goddamn funny, man. God it, damn. We don't we don't respond. We don't engage in shit like that. We don't tie. Like, uh, definitely are not worried about you crazy people. Like, seriously. no. And I mean, even when I was out there, dude, someone sent an email a week prior and said, just a whole list of just like, we have to work together. We have to do all these things. And like, you know, when it's a psychotic email, when it's super long and it's like, it's just too much. I didn't respond to it. And then the group right the day before the group right, they said, you don't respond to me. That's war on you. <laughs> it's like, like um, yeah. okay, I guess if you want to get mad, but like, you have to understand, like, you're being a little psychotic. You want my attention? Fucking create something. Publish yeah, something. Yeah, no put shit. Drop a YouTube channel and put out some real content. Then, then maybe we'll talk. These, these fucking emails. It from Mega Minds. 